everybody and welcome back. Hope everyone had a swell week. I had a great week mentally, but definitely a tough week physically. Had a total of four hockey games this week, including one in my league where we actually beat the top team in that league. So the top out of seven, and I think they've only lost one game out of 10, and we made them lose two out of 10, so that's great. But it meant a lot of work for me as the goal. And my body is definitely feeling it this week. I also got to go to one of my little cousin's birthday party. This is Sam's birthday, he turned five, and that was absolutely wonderful to get to attend. I don't quite have any updates about the plumbing quite yet, or the sewer lateral. Now things really changed that way. We have plans, I believe, on either Monday or Tuesday of this upcoming week uh, to start getting into the ground, uh, digging things up, and at least laying my portion of the sewer lateral. So everything in my yard will be done. It'll be the stuff beyond the fence that'll be, who knows exactly what happens. <laughs> so still trying to work through that. I do know that the knives came in for the dormer, so the blades, the sunburst pattern on the dormer, we have a brand new knife to be able to cut those perfectly and recreate that pattern. So Eric and Claire, I know, are working on that currently. And the rest of the molding that makes up the dormer has actually already been cut, so we're good there. So that's all for the immediate news. Let's get into some time lapses.
this shelving unit is looking much better now. It required way more sanding than I wanted to admit to myself. And really the only reason I sanded it at all is because I had to get enough of the paint roughed up and scuffed up. So I essentially what I was doing is giving the surface a little bit of a tooth. So basically little scratches, that way it can hold the paint a bit better because uh, I wasn't about to go ahead and strip this entire thing when I was painting it. So just give it enough tooth to allow me to paint it. But even getting this first coat on here took forever. I forget how many angles and corners and parts shelves like this have. Then you add in the fact that it's all beadboard in every little groove. <laughs> and yeah, it took, took about three or four hours just to paint the thing. And then uh, a day and a half of sanding. One thing I do know for sure is it is a whole lot cleaner than it used to be. All the spider webs and just grossness on this thing. Um, it just needed a new kind of fresh, clean lease on life. Uh, of course, this is just primer. It will not be going this bright, vibrant white. It'll be going more of this color up here, which is the original, which is kind of a off white beigey color. Of course, that isn't perfectly clean yet either, so I'll probably take a little bit of mineral spirits, clean that back so we can get to the original color. Uh, take a few photos of it and try to match it the best I can, and that way we'll get the original look of how all of this cabinetry looked. I did also this week get very, very, very close to having all of the doors at least sanded down and ready for shellacking. That, of course, being the three closet doors here. But because of the project that had to happen this morning, which we'll talk about in a minute, <laughs> Uh, things are a bit jumbled in here at the moment, so they're kind of stored away. But I'm sure I'll have those finished by next week. So that should wrap at least that project up. It should allow for a great deal of storage of these items while I'm working on the rest of this room and the adjacent room over there, which is the eventual kitchen. I've said also while painting these things, it was kind of cool to think about all the different medicines and stuff. This being a veterinarian clinic back in the day, it's just kind of interesting to think about the types of stuff a 1920s, 30s veterinarian would have needed to treat cats and dogs. And this would have been the place where those items would have been stored. The different chemicals and sterilizers and all kinds of different stuff that have been stored here. And uh, who knows how many animals were saved by the items that were stored in here. And of course, be, me being the big animal lover that I am, I find that really sweet. So, good on you, shelves. Hopefully they save some animals' lives. Next and lastly for this week, we have this floor, which looks a little wet and a little kind of odd at the moment. That's because this is all self-leveling concrete on here. Basically to level out this extremely uneven floor, um, the reason it was mostly uneven is because of all this new sewer lateral that had to be dug through this way that splits here, splits there, and splits over there. So this entire floor was an absolute mess. It is certainly looking better than it did. Although since I didn't do this myself, um, and I've used self-leveling stuff before, it is a bit bumpier than I've ever seen it. I don't know if this is something that happens in bigger pores. Uh, to my mind, it doesn't look like they actually mixed it terribly thoroughly. And I also still have some high spots uh, this one right here being the, the main culprit. So it's just one of those things though, you can kind of tell when dudes are rushing and when you pay money for something <laughs> and you've done it before, you expect there to be a certain level of uh, professionalism. Eh. Uh, this was something I was actually going to do myself, um, but my father was really trying this year to help me out and try was trying to force this kitchen in by Christmas which uh, obviously didn't happen. <laughs> so he had actually contracted these guys back in October to come do this floor, uh, which would have made a lot more sense. It would have been warmer. We'd have this door open all day, uh, just moving things in and out. I uh, actually had to cut down the door a little bit um, just so the new floor level could, so the door could open still. And then this little bit here in the bathroom too. Um, I'm not really worried about this because I just need to raise the level up enough to be able to build the walls out in here. Um, so I have something a decent enough surface to be able to screw down into. So not terribly worried about this area, it, it's okay. I haven't seen this dry out yet. I've only ever done like 
basically five floors. Um, nothing quite this big, maybe about half the room this size and a lot of little small rooms. Um, but I don't know, I, I've never seen so many little bumps and bubbles and stuff when doing this, so. But like I said, it's not dry yet. We will know later tonight. Of course, later tonight is when the video comes out, so it'll be an entire another week for you guys before you figure out the verdict of uh, how it all turned out. Um, but at the end of the day, it is more material. It is flatter than it was. So, uh, you know, it honestly doesn't have to look pretty under there. I'm going to lay tile down. Before anybody jumps with joy, it will not be anything that looks anywhere near as complicated as this. This room is quite special. Uh, obviously, all of these tiles were laid in the 20s. And to recreate this pattern for a room this size would be absorbently expensive. And uh, it's more than I'm willing to do for a kitchen, for what is going to be my modern backup kitchen in my laundry room. So just some fairly basic tile. It won't be really Victorian anyway, so I don't want to get, get anybody's hopes up about what this area is going to look like. It'll be somewhat plain and, and definitely more modern than anything else in the house. The main upstairs kitchen on the first floor, because we're in the basement right now, will be the one you guys are really going to want to see eventually, because that's the one that's going full Victorian, except for the 1920s appliances. So that one will be much more exciting than this kind of modern get me by sort of thing. But if we ever have events or anything else like that here, we can have essentially like a small catering kitchen. And yes, I do definitely plan on having events and having been doing fun things with you guys here when you do get the chance to visit. So thank you guys again, as always, for you guys' continued support. You know it means the world to us. We love you guys. We thank you all so very, very much. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and an even better week. We'll see you guys all again next time. Bye-bye.